right there, 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 the video ended suddenly. These are like shorter videos, right? Like on the time, and I gotta work out this time and thing of this audio, this video recorder right here. But sometimes that's good, it kind of keeps things, I could just focus on the subject matter. So this is still on um, the Black Jews, We the Black Jews, the flag, the star. First, the other video was more like on the star, the star David menorah connection right we touched on that briefly there the star david um a lily flower and menorah connection or the menorah and the lily flower connection don't know how we're gonna you know um order that in a title but this one is more to the fact of what we're mentioning here and what we're showing over here now okay we already went up from that picture right there right that picture let's scroll down here because someone said oh it was the one who said, well, that's not the flag. That's not the flag, right? That is one of our flags right there. That is one of our flags. And it's because of this. Let's see if we can bring up um, Rabbi Mordecai Herman, right? This is his majesty meeting with some of the Beta Israel. I think it was Tom Rath bringing some books to him, you know, concerning the work of the Beta Israel. And there's a lot of false information that's being circulated out there. You know, like his majesty was preventing, you know, the beta Israel or whatnot. No, what he was doing to the sister's question about, he was basically moderating certain things because the time was not right, right? Now, notice this over here too. We, we have to get the better picture of this right here, right? Um, there's a better picture of this. This is something I talked about. This goes back to 1903. Notice something. This is 1903. This is a treaty, right, of the Lion of Judah treaty between the king of Ethiopia, speaking about uh, Dagmawi Minulik, Minulik II, and the United States. It was a commerce relations between the two countries because many of our people, right, there was those of our people who had went over to speak to Minulik. So, so black men got on boats, went over there, right, and they dialogued, right, those who are of this movement. You know, we call it the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews Movement, right? That led to what we have, the Ethiopianism and the birth of organizations like the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated and other such works, right? Now, this is not the most clearest one. We have a much clearer one, but we're just using this to show the flag. So, so the two flags will be the Ethiopian flag on the other side. It's very dark. You can't see it, but we'll bring it out in another video. You can see the line of Judah right there. And then you can see this flag that has in the center of the of the star, it says Zion. It says Zion. So in this treaty between the United States of America, that was basically brokered by black men, right, who had went to Ethiopia. You know, that Harlem movement. There was these, these really these these very zealous movements that did a lot of foundational work, you know, all from post-1865 through the, 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 the late 1800s after the birth of the man-child, Lidz Tafari, that man was born there, Psalm 87, verse 4, into the 20th century, the 1900s, right? As we said right here, I don't know if you can see this clear, Excuse me, it says December 27th, 1903, right? So this is around the time of 1903, 1904. So basically, these black men went over there, and this is where there's, there's this, um, there's this uh, story and a narrative about how Minulik has sent some gold, right, to kind of like act the part of a kinsman redeemer to purchase again. Right, you know, we people because of that connection. So the connection between we, the children of Israel, and the children of the Ethiopians. Are you not as the children of Ethiopia, the male children of Israel? This is very significant, right? Both in the flag. So we're showing demonstrations, right, of this particular flag in association with our people, when European Jewish people, right, were still unsettled about it. Now. I noticed that they did something on this article page here since the last time. All right, let's go down here because usually at the bottom of the page, they tell you when it was last updated. Okay, it was last edited nine days ago. Now, ones and ones who know, we've done some videos where we basically said, look, the black Jews were first flying this flag, right? We're flying this flag. And we were saying that this is our flag, right? Right now, in this article here, it talks about when this flag was adopted on the right hand side, 
all this is like updated, right? We see a lot of update. Now they're saying it was 127 years ago by the Zionist movement of Europe, the 28th of October, right? The state of Israel, right? But then when we go through the article, you'll notice right here, right? There's this flag, right? What about this flag, right? That's, that was adopted in 1948. All right, so what they did was just adopt all these different kind of designs, but there was no settling of the design. What we, um, what we propose, right, that the true narrative is that when they saw we, the black Jews, the Harlem, you know, the Jews of Harlem, black Jews of Harlem, Yehudi, like these movements of Israelite consciousness among we black people making that connection. When we made the connection, that community, the black Jews of Harlem, with and among how the Selassie with the Lion of the tribe of Judah, these are significant connections. When we're pointing to books like the book by Dr. Ben, right, that shows that there was already activity and, and, and acceptance, right, of the claims, right, being made. You know, the last people to really accept these is really black people themselves, right? That's what's so interesting about this, right? Amongst the Europeans, if, if, if European Jews accept this, they say, okay, well, that's them. That's their thing, right? Nobody said, well, you're not really Jews or whatever. And they do that in today's climate, that's considered to be anti-Semitic. But for us, it's not considered to be that. So justice needs to be there as well, right? Because otherwise, one is going to have to come out straightly and say it's a racial thing. Many Yehudi would tell you it's not, right? But yet ones might doubt. Right, we black people, because this is still under the, you could say, the consequences of disobedience. This is where it says in the word, it says, and also that nation, right, will I judge, right, the Anglo American nation. This is judgment. We're in this time of judgment right now. Even what's going on in the state of Israel, the Hamas, the Hezbollah, the Palestinian thing, all of that, this is all one big, you know, one big judgment, right, that's going on. So, right here, Right, right here, they're going back to the um, 1891 and to these times. And it's very significant. Look, July 24th, 1891. <laughs> so the things that we can establish is that this particular star or a sigil, right, is connected with the Shoshan, Shushan, right, the lily within the scripture. It's shape. Its shape is not evil. Mm hmm even though like anything in the world, it can be applied for evil. As you mentioned, if an evil person takes good water and pollutes the water, well, that water is polluted, but actually water in principle is still good. This is our argument. Now, notice this one here. This is the famous author, right, of the, um, the Zionist movement, the European, right, Jewish Zionist movement, Theodor Herzl, right? This is from his proposed flag as sketching his diaries, right? Although he drew a star of David, he did not describe it as such. Mm, interesting. Although he drew a star of David, he did not describe it as such. I don't know if this is German or whatnot, but to get a translation of this right here, it's kind of hard to read, but hopefully we can get a translation of this. But notice, this is nothing like the flag that we know today. Remember, and he is the, the, the author of the Zionist movement. So what we're saying that this, this article has been backwritten, right, to kind of, you know, reflect their claims. And it seems to be continually denying our claims, right? If they had on this page, well, look, the black Jews of Harlem, boom, they have the flag right there. At least it will be acknowledging the truth of the matter. It doesn't change other things that may not be true, right? But at least it can acknowledge the truth of the matter. Right. So we see this right here. Right. Release inmates from from Buchenwald, Buchenwald, right. Buchenwald concentration camp, you know, in Germany. You see the flag they have right here. Now, we know that this is around the time of the what? Around the time of 1940s. Right. Right. It was in the 1940s when all that was over. Right. The 1940s. Right. The mid the mid to later 1940s. Right. So we see them have it right there. I'm talking about actual evidence because somebody can say well it was adopted way back then and look this is the this we say so so therefore it is right we don't know that right we can take the word for it but still we're seeking for more substantiation right so what we do know is this flag 
became identified, right, with, we could say, the state of Israel and, and Jews, generally speaking, in 1948, right? But then when we go over here, we have this here, this treaty, right, between the king of Ethiopia, speaking about Menelik II, and the United States. And the backstory is that black people, right, went forward to Ethiopia. You know, the whole Ethiopia identity and Ethiopianist movement, like e what they call Ethiopianism and Ethiopianists. There's some good Wikipedia articles out there. Check it out, right? We're traveling, you know? So back in the days, they didn't have airplanes, but they got on boats. A lot of men worked on boats and you know, merchants, seamen, so forth and so on. They traveled to Ethiopia and they dialogued about our situation over here, right? And because of, I think, some letters and other communication when they came back to America, right? They basically let the American government know, okay, this is this, this is what's going on. And the American government picked up on that and this treaty between the king of Ethiopia brokered by we, the black people of the world. Basically, I'll say by we, the black Jews over here who were in the Ethiopianist movement, the Royal Order, as we say, the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, right? And notice the flag that is there, right? Notice that flag. I'd like to get a better picture. I know I have a, another picture of this. You know, I don't know if I should pause this video and try to just grab it because then you'll see it much better, right? As the king himself said, I am not only emperor, king of kings, right, of Africa, Right, I am king of all Negroes. What, what Negroes? So they say, well, Matthew didn't identify with the Negroes. He was saying he was a Caucasian. Right? Blah, 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 blah. Right? Well, Caucasian don't really mean what people pretend it means, but that's a whole other, you know? Hala Selassie, the first Chicago defender, June 15, 1935. Now, some are trying to say, well, he didn't really say that. It was really an Italian thing. Well, bring forth the evidence. Let's look at it. We're going to go with this right here. Right, I am king of all Negroes everywhere. Right, so that Negro, that black connection. So, when one to one say, Look at this picture here. This is his majesty. Wow, how black is he? I mean, just look at that right there. How black is he? this? Is an amazing picture here. Right, how black is he? Right, you know, the blackest Jew, right, that the world ever knew. Check it out, and not just a Jew, but of the tribe of Judah. Right? We know that Judah, Yehuda, was a tribe. Right? Firstly, originally, later on, it, one could convert to the belief, Yahadut, Yahadut, to the belief system, Judah, what they call Judaism. Here's His Majesty in Jerusalem. We talk about, well, His Majesty's connection, right, with that land because of the ancient, you know, Solomon, Queen of Sheba, you know, the tribe of Judah, and then also in New Covenant times, right, the faith. Right, in the King of Kings Christ, Jesus Christos, the Moshiach, Yeshua. Right, so we have Jerusalem and the church over there, right, the Ethiopian Tawahedo church as well. So we want to show this right here. Right, let's show this right here. Right, see this psalm right here? Let me show the psalm right here. This psalm, Psalm 87. Right, right, his foundations in the holy mountains, right. Somebody read kind of did this a little bit here, but you'll see where it says right over here. It says, um, I will, with Ethiopia, you see what it says, with Ethiopia right there? With Ethiopia, this man was born there, right? And then it talks in terms of almost like a regathering, right? Like it says, he will gather us from the east, the west, the north, the south, the sign of the true cross, the cardinal points, right, of this earthly plane, right? This man was born there with Ethiopia. This man was born there, right? And then it goes on, right? And of Zion, it shall be said. And Zion in the Ethiopic royal order connection has to do with the Ark of the Covenant and also the throne of David, right? And the throne of Ethiopia, right? Being that Solomonic throne, that throne of David, right? That this and that man was born in her, right? Right? And it says down here, that the Lord shall count, right, when he writeth up all the people, when he writeth up the people, this is, we have to read, get this redone right here. I don't know who did this right here, but they need to, you know, at least get the KJV. You just do the plain KJV, you know, we can hail out Jah, Rastafari, so forth, but get the plain KJV. This is not really the best version of this, but this concept, the concept is good.
right? His foundations in the holy mountain of Zion, right? Yah loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. That means Jacob, speaking about Israel, has dwelt in many places, right? But then notice this Psalm, which is Psalm 87, right? Just want to point it out, Psalm 87. The word to our people, as majesty gave from such a time, let's go over here, the word to our people, right? Right, his, his Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, Hala Selassie, has instructed, right, tell the people to come home. Here, the race originated, and here it can be lifted to its highest plane of usefulness and honor. Assure them of the cordiality with which I invite them back to the homeland, particularly those qualified to help solve our big problems. Now, what's interesting is that land that was promised to Abraham, as we said in the first video, was from the river of the Euphrates, the river of Egypt, which is the same river as Ethiopia, right? Uh, you know, need we show that? Hopefully you can look at the map and look at the Nile River, how it connects with the Gihon. In fact, that's one of the first mentions in the Bible of Ethiopia, Kush, considering the Gihon, the Gihon River. And it says elsewhere that Solomon, he had to go down to the Gihon River to get anointed and become coronated to become king. Now, some say this is a little stream in Jerusalem. Others of us connect this with Ethiopia because Ethiopia is in that land of the kingdom, right? Ethiopia is in that land of the kingdom. Now, we have some other presentations right here, even that the red arrows you can see is a possible, one possible path, right? So between, let's bring this out right here. Between, I don't know if you can see this little line, some of the lines over there, right? Between between where it says the Sudan, roughly that little light line, right? Speaking about the river, and then the river Euphrates as you go out like to Baghdad is over there. So that means Arabia and all of that, right, is what was promised to Abraham, right? To Abraham, right? To Abraham and to his seed, seed. And they say seeds, right? His seed, right? So say we stand with, with Israel. Let's redo this here, y'all. We stand as Israel, right? We stand as Israel, right? To my Israel, the people. Here, this is on the royal order, right? Just to make this connection, right? So this is like the roots. This is what brings the various, like the streams kind of come together into this, this river and this flow right here, right? So here, just going to go through this kind of quickly right here, touch on a few things. I think we've touched on most of the questions, Right, you know there'll probably be more questions, but please, you know, bring it forward. But yeah, it was it was over here. This this was the one that we had open before. Right, this is the one right here. Right, right here it goes right there. You can clearly see the two flags. Right, so this article, that article really needs to be updated. Right, um, since even the state of Israel and many of the so-called progressives are like saying, well, you know, like, like the black Jews, all the Jews from everywhere, blah, 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 so forth and so on. Well, okay, there are some who have good intent and who have done good, you know what I mean, in that regard, against, you know, some of the, the, the racists, right, and the confused and the ones who say they are but are not, you know what I mean? However, you know, need to include, you know, they include this. So I know there's others that watch it. Take a screenshot of this right there. Right, and that should be up on the page right there. Like, like look at this is a, this is Rabbi Mordecai Herman, right? That's so who this is, Rabbi Mordecai Herman, right? And this community here, right, known as the Morris Zionist Temple of the Morris Jews, right? As we cross the the water, right, of time from the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, into the 1930s, right? We then get this community, right? the community, the greater community that comes up, the black Jews of Harlem or the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God, right? I don't know if you can see this right here, commandment keepers at the top, right? Um, commandment, it says commandment keepers, Ethiopian Hebrew con congregation, right? Beit Ha Tefila, Beit House Ha Tefila, House of Prayer, headquarters. You know what it says? It says, and my house should be a house of prayer, right, for all nations, right? The Yehudi coming out of Kush, right? And also say the Negro, right? Or better, you would say the black or the colored, <laughs> if we want to go there, right? The colored, 
right? You know, the colored community of Israel. Are we the Afro, right? The Afro Semites or Shemites, right? Afro Semites. So we Afro Semites, right? We got to speak about and speak against all the Afro, the anti Afro Semiticism. Right, so some say anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic. Okay, yeah, we understand that. That's a general term, but more specifically for our community and the other communities, because there are the moderate right communities, the centrists. There are the, you know, I say the right and the left. You know, just to recognize the reality, you have the different communities. This this kind of reaches out and embraces even many of the Israelites or the the um, Hebrew Israelite communities as well, right? They are also part of the core of I and I people as we all are seeking to kind of know this truth for ourselves. And part of knowing this truth is to know our story, our history. So there's some other documents here. Now, this is Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew, right? He's a significant person because of his witness's testimony. You can find more on that in the Black Jews of Harlem. Mm Mm-hmm. That's where he makes the identification, right, with, you know, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, with Haile Selassie I, with Negus and Negus and Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia. So the term, we always see emperor in them hark is always king of kings of Ethiopia. So you make Zabi the elect, the anointed and elect of God, right? So this is just to kind of just kind of sum up, right? And you can see the flag even in this one here. It's a little bit clearer, right? You can see this right there. There you go, right there, right? There you go, right? And that's the face we got to have, you know what I'm saying? There you go, right there. You know, you see it right there, right? So in other words, we have investment with this. Now, of course, some would say, well, because of what's going on nowadays, right? Because I think I had this picture and one, one had comment that, well, you know, this is not the flag, right? Well, this actually came from this here, right? Just to, for full disclosure, right here, we have this here. You see at the bottom right here? Let me show down here. Now, the Hebrew says, Ras Eferi, right? Yisrael. But that's poor Hebrew. That's not the proper Hebrew. So we had to correct the Hebrew there. But well, this was from www.rasta.org.il. Right, so it's a Rasta.org coming out of Israel. Right, there's some Rastaniks. You know, there are some some of those out there, some young, some old. Like among the European Jews, many of them are becoming more messianic, right? Many of them, you know, are becoming messianic for Yeshua, right? But also many of them are also seeing the true connection historically and prophetically, right, of the true Rastafari movement. Right, the true Rastafari movement. I'm talking about branches that out here in in the West. I'm talking about the root from Ethiopia, from the namesake. Right, so we the Black Jews. Right, very very important book right there, and you can see in our flag up here. No one says it's not the flag, right? But it is the flag, right? If you notice, in each province of each people, even in Ethiopia, right, each one has their respective flags. Each of the twelve tribes of Israel had their flags as well, right? So there's the main banner, you know, the main banner, of course, is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? That's the main banner, right? And then the subordinate banners, right, are these other banners. So we're showing one of the first of the subordinate banner, because here's what it says in Isaiah, Isaiah 49. This is also an interesting book, right? Talking some historical facts that a lot of us never got to know. Isaiah 49 and 6, I will also give my, the Israel for a light to the nations, that Yisrael will be a light. Look how we, the black Jews, even the Morris Zionist Jews, were a light. My, they showed pride within the way, and even that flag so much so that when it was decided which flag would be adopted, notice it was that flag. Even though the founder of Zionism, or, or the, well, one of the big, the big guy, you know, Theodore Herzl, right? Atheist as he was, he said he was going to give to Israel what God promised them, even though he was an atheist. We see where he had a flag, where he had something that looked like a star, but it didn't look nothing like the flag, right? But then we think that they've backdated certain things, right? To go way back and say, oh, they had adopted this 
all that time ago. Well, it's interesting, if they had adopted it, the only ones that were really proud to display it and identify with it was we, the black Jews, right? If that is the case. You see, we're not trying to speculate, just go on the facts that we have, right? So some of these communities, right? You see what it says right here? Some of these communities are all on the, you say, the, the right side of the river, right? Between the two rivers, right? You see what it says, Judah and beyond? Roughly right around there is the other river, right? The two rivers. So all this land was given, right? There's a, another quick meme up here. Just going on a little rapid fire. Just touch on a few things quickly here. I don't know if you can see the one on the left hand where it said Jews, Yehudi, right? Yehudi fleeing into the wilderness of what's called today Africa. Some would refer to that as Ethiopia, right? Then from the Roman murderers in 70 AD means that many sub-Sahara or Saharan Africans are direct descendants from it says Yisrael slash Judah, Yehuda, by bloodline, right? Or ones would say by DNA, right? I know people talk about a lot of the DNA so forth and so on, but this too can be touched on because there's a lot of positive DNA results that also points to proof and truth, right? So here you get also the hiding of the Hebrews, right? How they were kidnapped into not just America, but the Anglo-American system. We can't forget about the mother of the daughter of Babylon, talking about England, the Great Britannia, the Tin Lady, right? Yes, we know that they went through an effort to, um, what do you call it again? Um, abolish slavery. You see over there the Negro land map, right? The Bantu people, right? The West Africa regions, right? So the East and the West, right? Just wanted to show that there because this one here, shows a lot of you see the you see the flag with the menorah on it right where different communities went to and settled right some remnants of some of those communities still exist to this day right some over time right of course went into captivity right 